Andrew, you said you have a heavy statement to make. I made a heavy statement earlier. This is the greatest sausage in the world. Gordon Ramsay has just said that the best food destination in the entire world is the country of Laos. David, you got something to say to this guy. Yeah, I got something to say to that British colonizer. What? So dominant. Yeah, what? So directive. Say it. He is absolutely correct. <laughs> I'm telling you, as somebody who seeks out Lao food everywhere I go, even though I have not been to the country of Lao, I'm telling my you, Gordon Ramsay, he God. knows his stuff. Now, you can argue whether or not, you know, why these white guys still dominate all these global narratives about food or whatever. Or, you know, some people in the Yahoo comments are like, I'm sick of having diversity shoved down my throat. Give me some food I can pronounce. I don't like it. But we, we got to get into it, Andrew. We got to analyze the micro to the macro of what he was yeah. trying to say. Because, Andrew, a lot of people don't know Lao food is probably like the most underrated cuisine in the world. If and, not, and you've been saying it for years, David. You have been a big proponent of Lao food. You always Google it. You search for it in uh, at least for sure all in New York and California. So let's go through some of these clips off YouTube and we'll learn a little bit about Lao food. And hopefully by the end of this video, you are interested in trying Lao food. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. Let's get into the links. So this is him uh, Where on a Korean TV one? show. Yes, that's a really good question. Um, I recently came out of Lao and going back to the provinces and spending time in the countryside, mm -hmm. away from the tourist traps, mm -hmm. the food was just off the charts. Those Vietnam, traps. extraordinary melting pot of food. I love Vietnam. And so I, 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 I fell in love. There was just such a humble approach to eating incredible food. Mm -hmm. And then Madrid, uh, there's so many exciting things going on in Madrid as well. So I get to challenge my it's palate by traveling yeah, all over yeah, the world yeah. and yeah. finding the best locations. But mm. yeah, Lao. Yo, said, yeah, Lao. I just came out of there. And I want to go back. <laughs> um, real quick, Andrew, we got some videos because we got to explain to people because I, I would say the majority of people, maybe even including Asians, have no idea where Lao is. If yeah. you just graduated like high school. You know, for sure. I think if you're like Vietnamese or Lao or Thai, you know, yourself, you probably know a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, let's go to geography now. I love this channel. He breaks down the geography, food and people very well about places. So let's just start learn a little bit real quick. Let's begin. If I could describe Lao's location in two words, I'd probably say beautifully unfortunate. First of all, Lao is landlocked in Southeast Asia, bordered by all the other mainland peninsular Indochina nations, as well as China to the north. The country is divided into 17 provinces and one prefecture, Kampeng Nakhon, which includes the capital, Vientiane. Or Vientiane. I've heard Lao people pronounce it both ways. I don't know exactly which one is correct. I'm more inclined to say Vientiane, though, because I don't trust that T, but eh. <laughs> Yeah, hey. so I mean, Andrew, like you said, where is Laos located? It's surrounded by a bunch of delicious neighbors. Guys, all the neighbors are delicious. So how can the food not be delicious? Now, maybe it is landlocked, so they're using more river fish for their seafood and stuff like that. However, I'll tell you this. As far as the herbs go, David, the herbs, the Lao herbs, they're top notch, man. Yeah. And you know what I love about Lao food is I feel like they do have some slight influence from the neighbors, but they really got their own unique thing going on. And even if they were to cook a shared dish like the pork with egg stew, Andrew, that, you know, a lot of the countries may have, mm -hmm. they're going to cook it their own way for sure. All right, guys, let's real quick. Let's see what geography now has to say about the food. For 80% of the population works in agriculture and Lao food is quite delicious, similar to other regions around them, but noticeably spicy. You have things like papaya salad or tamak huang, the national dish, la, bamboo shoot soup, mok, sour sausage, and khao lam, which is sticky rice made in a bamboo pipe. Oh, and they have this rice whiskey thing called lao lao. That stuff is weird. Like sometimes they ferment it with snakes. Okay, so I'm part Asian, so I can say this. Asians, why do we do that? Why do we ferment whole animals in our <laughs> drinks? What's the I've appeal? Power, seen that before stamina? Dude, cribs. it's a rotting corpse extract decomposed carcinogens stop doing it <laughs> with a little message at the end hey but man that's just the ogs that's the way you know they put a cobra head in there um yeah andrew you heard it a lot of people work in agriculture Bro. the food is extra fresh and it's like extra fermented and extra spicy if so 80 percent of your population works in agriculture the food is gonna be fizzire <laughs> And uh, I know that the flavors of Lao food, they more exist on the extremes, like really fermented, really, really hyper fresh and not in the moderate zone. David, I got to give you a shout out because back when we were in Dallas with our friend Jack, which Dallas actually has a booming like Lao and Southeast Asian food scene. Uh, we ate at one of these restaurants and you made a statement that was very similar yeah. to what Gordon Ramsay said. Shout out to said. Donnie and Cow Noodle Shop. This ain't right. This ain't right, Jack. Cow Noodle Shop is one of my favorite restaurants in the entire world. Whoa! 
Whoa, let me I'm run that back. I'm just saying, man. We no, Andrew, I'm just saying the world didn't react to that statement the way they reacted to Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> statement, but I said it like five years earlier. All right, big shout out to Donnie Sarah Sabath. Uh, he's a great chef over in Dallas. He got a new chicken spot. Go check it yeah, out. Check out Cow Fried Chicken. All right, David, before we uh, wind down, we got to talk to people about our favorite loud dishes and the loud dishes that they can probably find in America because I think one of the issues about Lao food reaching that level like Thai food is that there's just not a lot of Lao restaurants. And any Lao dishes you can get, oftentimes you'll get them at Thai restaurants. Yeah, well, a lot of Lao people, they came as immigrants to America. They want to survive. They want to make a living and thrive, right? Mm -hmm. So they open up Thai restaurants because they know how to cook the Thai food. But even but they might only have like one to three Lao dishes on the menu because they don't feel like the larger public wants yeah. real Lao food. They would rather get the Bangkok Chinese Thai style dishes, which is like more like Pad Siu and stuff like that. But they're not going to get the, you know, all the different varieties of Tamakun yeah. and, and, and fried sticky rice. But, but now you're seeing Isan Thai restaurants, which now Isan Thai is pretty much Lao food. Right, so, I'll say 90% from what I heard. Yeah, so now that's kind of a way to serve Lao food but still saying it as Thai But you food. have to call it Isan Thai in the same way that like Sichuan Chinese is so different from Cantonese Chinese. Dish is your favorite. I think I ordered too much, but this is what a Lao feast looks like. My friends and I went to Olay's So I think that these are kind of representative we of the dishes you could find in America. Their Lao food. This place was unassuming, but once we oh, got to the back, cool, there's yeah. this like, gorgeous outdoor dining room. That's, Lao assuming. that's like one of the nicest Lao restaurants flowers. I've ever seen. So, so this is all the, the iconic Lao foods we Those ordered. Those bamboo baskets Kao with rice tea. Or, oh my god, the sao Damak dang, soup no mai, goi ba, Nam Dave, is this what it's like when people watch some of our videos? Yeah. And of course we ate <laughs> everything know. with sticky rice. Then we the got surprised with stuffed wings, chicken wings. That's Which really dish good. is your favorite? I think I ordered... The saoi is my favorite. Can yeah, you answer that question? Th this one right here. Oh, David, can we just clap it up for the saoi real quick? That's a 10 out of 10 banger. This, this, Andrew, you said you have a heavy statement to make. I made a heavy statement earlier. This is the greatest sausage in the world. Hold greatest, up, hold up, hold up. This not, is the greatest. No, Andrew, not just in Asia. You said the world. I said the world, guys. I'm talking about the kielbasa. Yes, that in, is included. I'm talking about uh, uh, the Polish sausage. I'm talking about the lap churn from China. I'm talking about any sausage in the world, guys. This is it. This yeah. is him. This and I is think it. I, I prefer it grilled, but the uh, the fried one is still good as well. Man, look at those oil. herbs, bro. I'm just gonna zoom in for you guys. Look at the colors. Mm. Do you guys know when you Google Lao food, do you see like the rainbow of colors that you're looking at? That's how you know a food is delicious. When you see all these colors, look. Cow soy too. Cow soy is really oh good. Gosh. The pork noodle. Man. All right, like these are just some of the uh, dishes that. You can find. I don't know can, can we just try to say them a little bit? Like I said, Andrew, we haven't had all these dishes because, like, I've only been to like maybe seven Lao restaurants in America, maybe ten. Uh, right, go for it. Go try try to speak Lao. I mean, and we'll do our best. Do not be offended, guys. My bad. I have no coaching just, in this. <laughs> Tom Tang, Yam Het, Pak Pa Mok Now. Hey, Judge David's Lao accent. Taught Mac Il, Pak Bong Fai Dang, Padok, Padok Andrew. I'm not gonna lie straight up. I know some people who look like pet dog. <laughs> let uh, me let me let me try. Ping ka mu, sa oi kwang, ping gai. Gai, yeah, gai is the same chicken. Ping jut, coconut, cow poon. I had that at cow noodle <laughs> shop. That was really good too. Oh my gosh. Man, it's crazy to see, Andrew. What do you think overall? Because it kind of caused a stir on the Yahoo comments. You know how Yahoo comments always keeping it real middle America. Some people are like, oh, yeah, what? Gordon Ramsay, let me guess. He's going to name some stuff I can't pronounce and I can't find and I won't like diversity getting shoved down her throats. <laughs> 2022, what's new? And other people were just like, uh, you know, there was even a comment being like, how can we support Vietnamese food after the war? And people were like, uh, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people still like German food and Japanese food, and that they were part of the war too. And so, you know, it's so funny because Yahoo News just gets uh, you get the boomer comments. <laughs> I mean, I I wish that they would just be like, wait, how come all these people are always saying all this Southeast Asian food is the best? Maybe I should go try it. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you'd like that. It. Yeah, I mean, um, I do think the badak is like pretty strong for Americans, but. 
you know, I, I think there's not only ways for the Lao American purveyors of restaurants to tone it down mm-hmm. and meet at a middle point. I think that's what they did at Cow Noodle Shop to some extent. And then also, like, for the, the local people to step up their taste bud yeah. game. So I do think Gordon Ramsay saying all this will kind of spark some tourism to go to Laos. Food tourism. Um, or at least seeking out Lao restaurants around your area. However, I will say this, like, Lao is not maybe in the same situation as Vietnam or Thailand. So it's, it's not as, like tourist centric like i'm sure you can go there but it's not as set up for that right you know in the and same i heard way that, that that's what is. people like about it and that's why the cuisine is so crazy because they don't got 7-elevens they don't have these multinational chains mm. like mcdonald's there like thailand is, has all of those now right so that's why people were like yo when i go to Laos, it's like stepping into thailand in like 1962 yeah i mean and, that, and that's a compliment by the way um but yeah i mean guys uh, what we mean to say is Lao food is great, and we've always given it rave reviews on our channel. We got so the receipts, too. We, I, we, we got 600,000 hit. Gordon Ramsay wasn't the first person to say this. But it does mean a lot when he <laughs> yeah, does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Gordon Ramsay, he does the work. Bro, he's swimming in the waters. He's eating the grasshoppers. Yeah, the gr- he, he's looking like a frogman down there. He does not care. He's doing everything. Hey, man, he's, he's like one of those British divers that helped save the Thai soccer team, bro. That's what he is. He's out there. He's out there. But anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think about Gordon Ramsay's opinions. Um, Lao people out there, let us know where we should go, like in major cities, what has, what spots have good Lao food because, again, they're hard to find, right? You might find them at a Thai restaurant, for example. So uh, give us that insider info. Yeah, I hope this encourages you guys to check out Lao food wherever you're at or go to your local Thai restaurant that's owned by a Lao person. Ask them for the specific Lao dishes that I'm sure are, like, select on the menu. Let us know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Side by D. Until next time, Lao food is delicious. We out. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We out. Peace.